The sermon for this Maundy Thursday is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 26, verses 17 to 30. Uh, the sermon is entitled, At His Word. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Indeed, at His Word. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. At his word, by his command, the people were to follow in faith. To do this. For it was good for them, blood, doorpost, lintel, lamb without blemish, a male a year old, as they were to eat of it, roasted on a fire with unleavened bread. And there we see the people doing as they were commanded. And there the Passover would commence all by the power of God's word. And by the power of God's word... We remember on the road they went, the exodus out on the road, a constant reminder that every step they took was possible by his word, that at his word, by his grace, to freedom they went. And likewise, by the power of God's word, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread And when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat at his word. This is my body, which is given for you at his word. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, at his word. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he given thanks, he gave to them, drink of it, all of you. That's at his word. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. At his word, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Do this because this is the command by our Lord himself. This is my body. This is my blood. Take, eat, take and drink for the benefit, for the sake of you from the fruits of of his death and resurrection, the forgiveness of all your sins. Maundy Thursday, mandate, command, do this. It is good for you. And from the Old Testament Passover, as we just read it in Exodus 12, to the anticipation of what was to come in the true Passover lamb, Jesus Christ. Here he delivers the greatest meal in the Lord's Supper. The blood of the covenant, the true Passover, passing over from sin, death, and the destruction of the devil. The Lord would promise there that night that here he would be. And today, As we partake, our Lord, the mystery, breaking time and space, our eternal Lord is here with us now in our presence by his word to feed you his body and blood for the forgiveness of all your sins. And this is your comfort Because at his word, he promises to deliver each and every one of you this very gift. Think about it. Jesus in his ministry, every miracle, right? Water to wine, feeding of the 5,000, healing the 10 lepers, the raising of Lazarus. How did this all happen? It's all by his word. Word, creation in itself, all by his word. And thus here too, Jesus, the word made flesh, giving to us his word. God 
above all things. And what he says, he does. And this is a profound reality. We just, in our hymn, as we, I think it was uh, stanza six, we beheld the mystery of what we receive. How could this be? It boggles our mind how profound this reality is that he is here with us, but yet at his word we believe. After all, the disciples, as we see in the Bible, they, they had trouble understanding too, but yet only they would realize this after the gory and bloody death of their Lord. Yet at his word, he went just as he foretold, and at his word, he died and would rise for the sins of the world. See, that's what this day is about, to trust in faith the word, which is beyond ourselves. This is our faith. This is our trust. And on that night when he was betrayed, Jesus gave his last will. Before he was to die, he gave his last will command do this at face value to receive the body and blood of jesus for the forgiveness of all your sins and this is where our faith rests on his last will and testament at his word for the forgiveness of all your sins not a day goes by that i never or that i do not need to hear this Not a day goes by. We need his forgiveness. And this is where he gives this very gift. And there we examine our hearts and minds. And when we delve deep enough, we see the subtlety of our own little idols, our own sinful supremacy, trying to reign supreme in our lives. There we see our lust for independence, our arrogance and pride grabbing hold, and there we see living life as we matter the most. The Lord very well knew this. He knows our sin. And there he would wash the disciples' feet, foretelling what was to come in his greatest love that is at the cross. In John 13, it reads, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. This love is his death. Even those that were against him, he died unconditionally for the sins of the world, full of grace, mercy, and compassion. This is the love to which our Lord speaks of. And he calls his disciples to love one another. Surely a good command this is. As we live in a world and we always ask ourselves, if we just simply could love one another, how this world would be a better place. Yet as we examine our own hearts, the new commandment of the Lord or what the Lord has given to us, have we loved one another in thought, word, and deed? Have we loved unconditionally or do we love conditionally? Have we loved with manipulation in mind? What can I get out of this? And ultimately, have we loved our enemies, even those who have sinned against us? Have we loved and cared for our neighbors first? Examine your hearts, my friends. And here we find ourselves hungering and thirsting for righteousness. There we find ourselves knowing full well that what we bring to the table, well, there at the Lord's table, we we truly need, and that is his forgiveness. And thus this night, as we hear God's word, it is a time of humble repentance, confessing our sins and resting in faith on the work of Christ. See, the gospel, this is what this night is all about, because everything flows 
from the good news of Jesus Christ. This blessed command, do this in remembrance of me, it's right, flows from the gospel. To take and eat, to take and drink, this is my body, this is my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Is means is, and his body is his body, his blood the same, as you partake and receive these very promises. Do this, Jesus says. How do you know, my friends, that you are forgiven? How do you know? How do you know that you have eternal life? How do you know that you are saved from the fangs of death and the power of the devil? How do you know? Do we dig from within and try to find a semblance of purity or self-righteousness or that we've brought our merits to God saying, look what I've done? Is that our rest? Is that our consolation? Now the devil will bark with every accusation. The devil will drop every ounce of doubt. The devil will twist and turn you to a false god. The devil will say, how could this be so? Yet this night the Lord says, this is my word I give to each and every one of you. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this because my word here I promise to be for you. Not just with you, but for you. Here I give you your assurance. Here I give you your confidence. Here I give you your certainty that this heavenly life-giving meal you receive the forgiveness of sins. What other meal can give you such things? Here and now, this is what we receive. The care of our soul. And that is in this word. The hungry soul that is full and filled by the Lord's gifts as he delivers to each and every one of you the remedy of all remedies, the medicine of immortality, of ever lasting life. I wonder if we went to the local pharmacy, if it was in the aisle of cold and cough, allergy, and all the other sicknesses we deal with in this life, if there was an aisle that said, here receive the gifts of eternal life. And here at this table, this is what we receive. Now, Jesus is saying, the search is over. No need to search for confidence in your self-righteousness. No need to search for certainty in your thinkings and feelings. No need to search for assurance in your own merits. No, I give you at my word, my body and blood for the forgiveness of all your sins. This is peace, my friends. And on the night that he was to be betrayed, there he was giving them the parting words of peace, instituting the greatest meal given to man, the soothing of your soul comfort for the broken, the rest for the unrestful, that as we gather together, examining our hearts and minds, we receive this very promise. Do this in remembrance of me. Because it is good for you. And that's why you are here. Because this is where the Lord promises to be here with us now for the forgiveness of our sins, giving to each and every one of you the soothing for your soul. And thus we pray. We give thanks to Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. That in this holy sacrament, God equips you with the joy of forgiveness, not only the joy of forgiveness, but also the call to love and serve those that God has placed in your life. 
to go in peace, to go forgiven and redeemed, knowing that you're not adding anything to your salvation, but you're already there, my friends. You are forgiven. You know this true love given by our Lord's word, and there you live this life of faith, loving and serving with a clear conscience, loving and serving as the redeemed children of God, loving and serving in the peace of Christ, knowing full well that by his word, he has called you to be his own, and by his mercy and grace, you live set free, loving and serving as your cup overflows by the very promise that is given at this altar. That's what this day is about. It is about your anchor in Christ. This is your faith. Do this, for this is Christ's gift to each and every one of you right here. For the Lord says, friends, children, nothing to prove anymore. I give this to you on this Maundy Thursday. The mandate, the mandatum, the command. And proceed, not with doubt, not with uncertainty, but with the words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.